Post Malone 12 Carat Toothache album review. Let's chat about it. Good morning and good evening, friends. John here from What's Spinning. Here tonight to chat about this latest album from Post Malone. Ah, oh, Posty. Uh, you, you know him. You, you either love him or you hate him. And if you're anything like me, you have very conflicting thoughts on Mr. Malone. I mean, straight from the get-go, his August 26th mixtape. No, I was not a fan. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I freaking hated so much of this thing. There are very few things more in modern pop rap than I hate than Hollywood dreams. Uh, I'm not much of a stony guy either. I didn't think it was a very captivating full-length debut, even if I, I do have to admit I do like me some White Iverson. But I did at least, you know, even though I wasn't wilder crazy about the album i did see some progression there was some bluesy moments uh there was a little bit more emotion to it for sure but the amount of uh progression that he showed between that and his next full length album beer bongs and bentley's is actually pretty commendable truthfully in modern pop rap this album's actually really good. His songwriting improved. It was much more emotional and bluesy. It showed him pulling from different genres. He sounded like the real deal. Not only that, but I thought his vocals had come tenfold. Now, Hollywood Bleeds, his last album, it's tough. It's not necessarily a bad album. I mean, in a big way. I mean, compare this to where he was early in his career. There are so many better tracks on Hollywood's Bleeding. But the thing is, consistency. It wasn't nearly as consistent as where he'd been the, like, two years prior. This new single, though... I don't know. I was not feeling it leading up to this album. I wasn't exactly excited for this album, but I was curious to see where Posty was these days, and oh man, Reputation starts this album off, and this is certainly not where I wanted to hear this. This is a straight-up piano ballad, uh, which I don't really hate on paper, but it's overly sappy, and there's no actual emotion in sight. I mean, I will say this. It is dark and depressive. As far as that goes, Post has reached a new high. But as far as vocals go, I have not dis I have I have not hated his vocals this much in really, really long time. It's very bland and very disappointing. Uh, cooped up with Roddy Rich. I I'm gonna be blunt with you guys. I think it's the worst track here. I'm all in on a great pop rap tune. When it's done right, man, is it ever. I mean, hell, when he's on point in the pop rap game, Posty could put out a freaking banger, man. My God, Sugar Ray, this is so good. But this sounds like he's done it a hundred times, and Roddy Rich, man, he just keeps sliding down the ladder, man. He just seems to have less and less to say each and every time he rolls around these days. I mean, God, some of his one-liners here, Jesus. Lemon Tree, it's, it's not getting any better. This, once again, tear-soaked acoustic ballad has nothing going on. And listen, some of his bluesier moments are usually some of his best. But this is, like, got zero emotion. Wrapped Around Your Finger is incredibly flimsy. Like, it, like I can't stress that enough. It's so flimsy. The production through most of this album, man, it's not impressive at all. It sounds just bad. This beat sounds like it was made in five minutes. Like, I'm so salty right now. This isn't even catchy. And it stinks because even in this wasteland of pop rap, Posty has his damn moments. I Like You, Happier Song featuring Doja Cat. I actually really like this. Like I was saying, a good pop rap tune is just that. And this is what this is. This is so sweet and catchy and likable. Post and Doja Cat have a ton of chemistry. There's a really sweet sentiment behind this tune. I love how lighthearted and fun this track is. It may be the catchiest one here. Then we have I Cannot Be, a sadder song featuring Gunna. I mean, I, I was shocked when I actually ended up enjoying this track. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here, and I, I have enjoyed a total number of zero tracks from Gunna in my life. But this is a really intoxicating, really enjoyable, gloomier side of pop rap. It's catchy, it's carefree, it's a really great medium for Post. It's one of the most tragic tunes here, but it's done really tastefully, and like I said, I actually don't hate Gunna's contributions here. If I was to take like one track where I thought the sound of this whole album would be, it would be insane. This is the closest thing that you're going to get to a perfect medium for Post. It's teary-eyed and emotional, but 
it's got a little angst to it. It's got some bite to it. The production's probably some of the best here, too. Like, this beat is money. If you put this on in a club, it would actually work pretty well. I mean, songwriting, you know what you're getting here. Post isn't rewriting history. But as far as a great, gloomy banger, yeah, it's good. Then we have Love Hate Letter to Alcohol featuring Fleet Foxes. Listen, I could see this being a dropping off point for some. I could totally see this going one of very two ways. You either love it or you hate it. Personally, though, I do really like it. Fleet Foxes bringing these glorious harmonies and this suffocating, very intense beat it brings up the drama. And once again, songwriting-wise, I mean, what were, what were you expecting? There are some really, really cheesy lines. Some of them make me shake my damn head. It's definitely overdramatic, too, but it does work. God, this album is all over the place, though. It really is. I think it's the worst thing I've heard all year. Wasting Angels featuring the Kid Leroy. No. Once again, this is a very lighthearted track featuring a lot of sweet sentiments. But this track is genuinely, like, goofy. It's freaking cheesy and without a defining hook or some, you know, one-liners or a compelling vocal performance, it just falls really flat. Oh yeah, and the Kid Leroy adds nothing. And Euthanasia is not much better, let me tell you. I will say this though, I really do like the very chilly, meditative beat. That's really, really good. Like, oh, like, I love it, actually. This is what I really expected to hear post or I'd like to hear more of it. But as far as everything else goes, this is a big backstep. Like, a really big backstep, songwriting-wise, vocal-wise, production-wise. But then we have When I'm Alone. Where did this come from? This is right on the money. I love the upbeat and heavy synths of this track. It just sounds a little bit more modern. And like, as far as production goes, it's once again some of the best here. Post, for a lot of this album, has been struggling to kind of reach where he's been for the last couple of years, but he really nails it here. It's intense, it's raw, it's the most emotional track here. But there's no middle ground. Waiting on a Miracle stinks. This is so boring, so bare. I feel like this icy, chilly, lonely sound would be money for Post, kind of like Kanye's 808s or Drake's Take Care. But this is so boring. It's so boring, but then one right now featuring The Weeknd is great. Say what you will, The, the Weeknd's contributions to other people's tracks, I mean, it's usually right on the money. This is no different. I mean, yeah, there's some lines on this track that make me cringe pretty hard, but at the very least, I'm able to, you know, laugh, shrug it off. As far as the beat goes, it's one of the most memorable here. Like, Abel actually sounds like really at home in Post's world on this track. It's a really great collaboration. I had high hopes that this album's gonna end off on a high note. But then we have New Recording 12, January 3rd, 2020. I have, uh, I have one note written here, and that's, uh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, what, what is this? God, this isn't raw, this isn't, you know, emotional, this is bullshit, this is, we didn't need to hear this, this is, this is like, this is like B-Sides and Rarities compilation stuff post, come on. Yeah, this album is not good, I mean, I, I wasn't that hyped to hear it, but kind of all my fears came true. He spends most of this album trying to keep up with himself from four years ago, and a couple of times that he does make it, yeah, yeah, he does just fine. There's some great bangers on here. But at the same time, the production, the beats just seem really underwhelming. This doesn't sound very good, and he sounds lost. His vocals don't sound very good. His vocal inflections aren't fun. Most of his collaborators here are so hit and miss. Oh, it's really disappointing. I want to like it, but I just, I can't. If you're on a light four on this album, let me know what you guys think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let us know what you want us to chat about in the future. Until next time, have a great day, friends.